Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video because I have a lot to share um, because this is breaking news here because mortgage rates have been decreasing now the lowest levels since approximately early August this year, more or less a four month low regarding average rates today. Um, I have that to share, um, plus a lot of other reports to share in today's video, especially regarding uh, future indications of home buying demand, which of course would be applications for home loans, home showings, and much, much more. I have a lot to share in today's video. Let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, this is a report from Bloomberg, uh, which was reported um, today, which is Thursday, December 7th here. It says rates, or it should, be, it should say rates. Rates have fallen 69 basis points or 0.69 percentage points over the past five weeks. Uh, that's the most since the year of 2008. So over the previous five weeks, rates have fallen by nearly 70 basis points. Uh, the biggest decrease we've seen going back to the 2008 housing crash. Now here's something that is basically all over the news as of Wednesday, uh, because refinance activity, these are um, people submitting loan applications to refinance or mortgages here, uh, jumped nearly 14% the most since February. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there regarding this. So I'll, so I'll provide some uh, context uh, regarding what really happened here. Also, as I mentioned, according to the uh, Mortgage News Daily, uh, daily rates uh, decreased to about a four month low. So the average rate uh, today for people with great credit, which is uh, December 7th, is at 7.05%, excluding Wednesday uh, when the rate was at 7.04%. This is a four-month low uh, for your average rate. Uh, general rates are at 7.55%. What's really interesting regarding this is that about one and two years ago, uh, jumbo rates were actually lower than a 30-year fix. Now they're approximately 50 basis points higher compared to a lower balance uh, conforming um, loan at 7.05%. Uh, FHA and VA loans is around 6.4% here. So look at this. Daily rate uh, today, 7.05%. Again, the previous day was at 7.04%. One year ago, we were at 6.29%. Therefore, rates have increased approximately 76 basis points. Um, looking at the past several months though, uh, ex again, excluding the previous day at 7.05%, this is actually the lowest rates we've had going back to August 9th this year. And I'll share the reasons why rates have been decreasing here in just a little bit. Um, also today, uh, according to Freddie Mac, they reported the average rate for people with great credit uh, decreased to 7.03%. Uh, by my uh, dumb math, that marks the sixth consecutive week of decreases of rates. According to Sam Cater, who is Freddie Mac's chief economist, he said that's down from the uh, nearly 7.80% rate we saw just six weeks ago. Uh, that was at 7.79% and was more or less a 20-year high regarding average rates. He also says here when rates began to rapidly drop, uh, purchase applications rebounded initially, but this improvement in demand diminished in the last week. He's referring to the MBA's report regarding um, application numbers for purchases, um, and I'll share that with you guys in a little bit, uh, because there's some misinformation out there regarding uh, the numbers that was shared in that report here. He also says here, although these lower rates remain a welcome relief, it is clear they have to drop further to more consistently reinvigorate demand. I will add to that, I think a lot of people are waiting for home prices to decrease as well in order to get off the sidelines and buy a house as well. Uh, because as you guys all know, we have a very a big or very a challenging market uh, regarding a, a lack of housing affordability. So not only do we wanna see rates decrease, but of course home prices fall as well. I'll mention this again because <laughs> when rates decrease, and by the way, they have decreased by about one percentage point, going from about 8%, now around 7% right now. When rates decrease, usually that increases demand, and therefore that puts upper pressure on prices. So I just kind of worry about that in my back of my head because I do want to see housing to become more affordable, but the uh, main way to do that is for more inventory to hit the market and that could be for from existing houses or brand new home construction. And when supply increases, that causes prices to fall as well. 
So in my opinion, that's really what we need to see, um, not a huge decrease in rates. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So uh, one thing I do wanna mention as well, when looking at weekly rates, as I mentioned, rates have been decreasing big time over the past six weeks. Uh, the average rate, uh, according to Freddie Mac, uh, for the week ended October 26th was at 7.79%. Again, that was more or less a 23-year high uh, regarding rates, but they have been decreasing ever since then. Now, here's something I want to clarify with you guys, because um, uh, according to CNBC here, it says mortgage refinance demand jumps 14% as rates fall to the lowest point since August. Reading this headline, it implies, and also I read this article as well, it implies that we're seeing uh, people refinance uh, in greater numbers due to rates decreasing. That's based on one week that it doesn't include the observance of the Thanksgiving week in the previous week. I'll share that with you guys in a little bit because this is just kind of misinformation in my opinion here. It says here, according to this uh, CNBC article, after uh, surging over 8% in October, uh, rates are falling back towards 7% again. And that jump is starting the refinance market or jump starting the refinance market. Um, not true. Uh, last week, the average contract interest rate for a 30 year fixed rate mortgage uh, with conforming loan balances, that is not a jumbo loan. That's balances of $726,200 or less that actually decrease from 7.37% uh, down to 7.17%. That's according to the MBA. As a result, applications to refinance a home increased 14% from the previous week. And it's actually all over the news as well. Uh, CNBC reported this. Uh, again, this headline says, as rates drop, demand rises, or uh, mortgage demand rises. Uh, mortgage demand remains at multi-decade lows as a uh, few homeowners refinance. Actually, they got that right, but that actually was announced uh, one month ago. In any case, it's all over the news regarding this uh, increase in demand for refis, but I want to provide some clarification here because a lot of people are getting this wrong. So have a look at this. This is according to the NBA, I just posted on December 6th, which was yesterday on Wednesday. It says applications increased 2.8% from one week earlier. What happened one week previous to this? Because this report covers the week ended December 1st. The previous week was Thanksgiving week. So a lot of people um, opt to not look at houses during the um, holiday week. And of course, a lot of people decide not to apply for a new loan during the holiday week. So because we saw this dip in application numbers during the Thanksgiving holiday week in the previous week, of course, it makes sense that applications overall increase in the next month or the next week, I should say. So for example, their refi index increased 14% from the previous week. One thing the MBA should actually um, note here, which I actually emailed them regarding this a couple of times, actually emailed uh, Fallon Taylor here. I stated that uh, the MBA should clarify this because the refinance index is actually not seasonally adjusted. Therefore, they're not taking into consideration that two weeks ago, they saw a sharp pullback in applications for refis, whereas the next week, this report, uh, they actually reported an increase. So go figure. A huge decrease in the previous month or previous week due to the Thanksgiving holiday. And of course, it makes sense that refis increased by 14% compared to the previous week. Uh, in my opinion, they should note this as not being seasonally adjusted or they should do a seasonal adjustment in order to uh, account for the fact that two weeks ago, we had a Thanksgiving. So in any case, I think a lot of the media is, is getting this wrong here. But in any case, the only reason why this we saw a big increase in applications for refis is because we saw a huge decrease two weeks ago. Anyways, um, having said that, uh, it was 10% higher compared to the same week one year ago here. Uh, here's uh, something that we should be focusing on when talking about home buying demand uh, nationwide here. Because they're seasonally adjusted purchase index decreased 0.3% from one week earlier. And that's pretty astonishing given the fact that rates have been falling big time, um, that uh, the uh, number of applications for home loans actually decreased last week. 
This also marks the first decrease in the last five weeks. So the previous four weeks, applications for home loans to buy houses were increasing. Now this week, it posted the first decrease in about five weeks. So to me, this really tells me that um, we're really seeing a huge pullback in demand still. Uh, even though we're at four month lows for rates, um, applications for home loans to buy houses still decreased last week. Um, also, it was about 17% lower compared to the same week one year ago as well. So according to Jill Kahn, who's the MBA's vice president and deputy chief economist, he stated the following. Uh, slower inflation and financial markets anticipating the potential to end the Fed's um, rate hike cycle are both behind the recent declines in rates. Refinance applications saw the strongest week in two months. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> it's like it only increased because we had uh, the uh, Thanksgiving holiday week two weeks ago. In any case, <laughs> um, it will have to, we'll have to see what uh, the next week looks like because that will not account for any adjustments regarding holidays. Anyways, it says um, applications uh, for purchases remain 17% lower than a year ago, held back by low inventory of existing houses uh, when looking at pre-COVID levels and still challenging affordability conditions. Absolutely. Uh, the refinance share of applications increased to 34.7% up from the 30.6% we saw two weeks ago or one week ago. Uh, this is pretty crazy because of all the applications for home loans, this is for purchases and refis, about 35% are doing a refinance, even though rates are still relatively high compared to the 3% rates we saw in 2020 and 2021. Uh, meanwhile, the adjustable rate uh, mortgage share, uh, the arm share of activity, uh, decreased to 7.4% of total applications. Uh, this is uh, relatively in the middle of the uh, past 24 months per se, because the high was around 12%. I believe the low was around uh, 3%. So right now we're at 7.4%. And the reason why that number is still higher compared to the 12 month low is due to this right here. The average 30 year fix for balances of less than 726,000 decreased to 7.17%. That's the average rate for people with great credit at 7.17% according to the MBA. But for a 5-1 arm, that actually decreased to 6.58%. So a fairly big uh, uh, change here uh, from 6.6% more or less to about 7.2%. And a 5-1 arm, by the way, is fixed for five years, then it becomes variable or adjusts to current rates every year thereafter. So it's a much more risky loan product compared to a 30-year fix, uh, because a 30-year fix, of course, your rate is fixed for 30 years. So let's talk about why rates um, have been decreasing as of late, and let's just talk about what's happened uh, this week. So on Tuesday, uh, December 5th, here's what happened regarding our uh, economy here. And this is according to investing.com, their um, economic calendar. And again, I'll provide a link in the video description below for all the reports I'm sharing in today's video. So the JOLTS report, which is a job openings report, a look at the number of job openings nationwide for the month of October was at 8,733,000, well below the forecast at 9.3 million. Um, also well below the previous reading, which was in September at nearly 9.4 million. This means there's fewer job openings, which is what the Fed wants to see. They also want to see wages decrease as well, and of course, for more people to lose their jobs, because that would um, imply that we're not going to see uh, people spend money and therefore cause inflation to go up further. This is exactly what the Fed wants to see, uh, a, a softness or cracks in our labor market. Um, also on Wednesday, the ADP uh, non-farm um, employment report here for the month of November came in at 103,000, uh, which is actually below the 130,000 that was forecasted and also below the levels we saw back in October. So the number of job gains, according to the ADP, was below the forecast and also below the previous reading as well. Um, also on Thursday, which again is today, uh, continuing jobless claims. This is the number of people who are still submitting unemployment claims on a national level was actually at 1 million 861,000, 
which actually is below the forecast at 1.9 million and also below the previous reading at 1.925 million. Um, however, though, the initial jobless claims, this is the first time that people are applying for unemployment, was at 220,000 this week, and below the forecast at 222,000, but more or less on par with the previous reading, which was the previous week. So overall, a bit of a mix of news here regarding um, our labor department here, but overall, uh, we're starting to see some uh, softness in a labor market, which is one reason why rates have been decreasing as of late. Okay, let's change gears uh, slightly here and talk about the number of people searching for homes for sale on Google. Uh, this is on Google Trends uh, website here. So the index right now is at 63. One year ago, the index was also at 63. So more or less the same level of interest for people searching for homes for sale on Google compared to 12 months ago. Also according to showingtime.com, they have a look at the number of real estate agents showing houses to their home buyers on a national level. Actually look at North America to be exact. And this is through the week ended December 5th this year. So this year, the number of real estate showings compared to the first week this year decreased by 30.3%. Last year at this time, we were down by 37.5% compared to the first week last year. So please leave me a comment below with your biggest takeaways from today's video. Mine is this sharp rise in rates. I mean, just about what? Nearly two months ago, we're at 8%, the highest rates in about 23 years, and now rates have dropped to nearly a four-month low. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what next year looks like uh, because, of course, this year, or the remainder of the year, we tend to see a huge decrease in demand, a huge decrease of new listings, and that would be normal. But uh, the, the spring home buying season next year is going to be very, very interesting, especially regarding inventory levels as well as rates as well. With that said, please comment below with your biggest takeaways from today's video. Also, if you guys got any value out of this video whatsoever, then please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. Of course, I appreciate you. Hope you have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.